Um, morning business is closed. Under the previous order, the Senate will proceed to the consideration of Senate Congressional Resolution 26, which the clerk will report. As Conrad's 26. Madam President, I ask consent that the clerk read the entire uh, text of the resolution. Without objection. As Conrad's 26, apologizing for the enslavement and racial segregation of African Americans. Whereas during the history of the nation, the United States has grown into a symbol of democracy and freedom around the world. Whereas the legacy of African Americans is interwoven with the very fabric of the democracy and freedom of the United States. Whereas millions of Africans and their descendants were enslaved in the United States and the 13 American colonies from 1619 through 16, 1865. Whereas Africans forced into slavery were brutalized, humiliated, dehumanize and subjected to the indignity of being stripped of their names and heritage. Whereas many enslaved families were torn apart after family members were sold separately. Whereas a system of slavery, racism against people of African descent, upon which it depended, became enmeshed in the social fabric of the United States. Whereas slavery was officially abolished until was not officially abolished until the ratification of the 13th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States in 1865 after the end of the Civil War. Whereas after emancipation from 246 years of slavery, African Americans soon saw the fleeting political, social, and economic gains they made during Reconstruction eviscerated by racism, lynching, disenfranchisement, disenfranchisement black codes, and racial segregation laws that impose a rigid system of officially sanctioned racial segregation in virtually all areas of life. Whereas a system of racial segregation known as Jim Crow, which arose in certain parts of the United States after the Civil War to create separate and unequal societies for whites and African Americans, was a direct result of the racism against people of African descent and was engendered by slavery. Whereas a system of Jim Crow laws officially existed until the 1960s, a century after the official end of slavery in the United States, until Congress took action to end it. But the vestiges of Jim Crow continue to this day. Whereas African Americans continue to suffer from the consequences of slavery and Jim Crow laws, long after both systems were formally abolished through enormous damage and loss, both tangible and intangible, including the loss of human dignity and liberty. Whereas the story of the enslavement and the segregation of African Americans and the dehumanizing atrocities committed against them should not be purged from or minimized in the telling of the history of the United States. Whereas those African Americans who suffered under slavery and Jim Crow laws and their descendants exemplify the strength of the human character and provide a model of courage, commitment, and perseverance. Whereas on July 8, 2003, during a trip to Goree Island, Senegal, a former slave port, President George W. Bush acknowledged the continuing legacy of slavery and life in the United States and the need to confront that legacy when he stated that slavery was one of the greatest crimes of history. The racial bigotry fed by slavery did not end with slavery or with segregation, and many of the issues that still trouble America have roots in the bitter experience of other times. But however long the journey, our destiny is set. Liberty and justice for all. Whereas President Bill Clinton acknowledged the, the deep-seated problems caused by the continuing legacy of racism against African Americans that began with slavery when he initiated a national dialogue about race. race. Whereas an apology for centuries of brutal dehumanization and injustices cannot erase the past, a confession of the wrongs committed and a formal apology to African Americans will help bind the wounds of the nation that are rooted in slavery and can speed racial healing and reconciliation and help the people of the United States understand the past and honor the history of all people of the United States. Whereas the legislatures of the Commonwealth of Virginia, the states of Alabama, Florida, Maryland, and North Carolina have taken the lead in adopting resolutions officially expressing appropriate remorse for slavery, and other state legislatures are considering similar re resolutions. And whereas it is important for the people of the United States who legally recognize slavery through the Constitution 
and the laws of the United States to make a formal apology for slavery and its successor, Jim Crow, so they can move forward and seek reconciliation, justice, and harmony for all the people of the United States. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate, the House of Representatives concurring, that the sense of the Congress is the following. One, apology for the enslavement and segregation of African Americans. The Congress, A, acknowledges the fundamental injustice, cruelty, brutality, and inhumanity of slavery and Jim Crow laws. B, apologizes to African Americans on behalf of the people of the United States for the wrongs committed against them and their ancestors who suffered under slavery and Jim Crow laws. And C, expresses its recommitment to the principle that all people are created equal and endowed with inalienable rights of, to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and calls on all people of the United States to work toward eliminating racial prejudices, injustices, and discrimination from our society. Two, disclaimer, nothing in this resolution, A, authorizes or supports any claim against the United States, or B, serves as a settlement of any claim against the United States. Under the previous order, there will now be 60 minutes for debate with respect to the concurrent resolution, with time equally divided and controlled between the two leaders or their designees. Senator Ma from Iowa. Madam President. Senator from Iowa. Well, Madam President, the clerk just read for the first time ever in this body what we should have done a long time ago, an apology for slavery and the Jim Crow laws, which for a century after emancipation deprived millions of Americans their basic human rights, equal justice under law, and equal opportunities. Today, the Senate will unanimously make that apology. I first of all want to thank my friend Senator Sam Brownback for all of his hard work and over the last couple of years working together to get this finally to this point. I can't thank him enough. He wouldn't give up and he stuck in there with us all the time working to make sure that, that this day would come and I thank him profusely for his help in this effort. I also want to publicly thank Congressman Steve Cohen on the House side who is the leader of this resolution that they will be passing soon over there. John Quincy Adams once remarked that our country began its existence by the universal emancipation of man from the thraldom of man. Indeed, America's purpose and enduring ideal can be summed up in that one simple but powerful sentence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yet as we all know, for too long, many in this country were not free, Many lived in bondage. Many Americans were denied their basic human rights and liberty. From 1619 to 1865, over four million Africans and their descendants were enslaved in the United States. Millions were kidnapped from their homeland, suffered unimaginable hardships, including death during the voyage to America, a crime against humanity. In Elmina Castle, on the coast of Ghana, the place I recently visited, there is a chillingly named Door of No Return, an infamous open portal which, as one looks over the horizon across the Atlantic, makes all too clear the excruciating inhumanity and horror faced by the men and women shackled inside this castle as they were led through that door and put on the slave ships bound for America. Led through that door, enslaved, never to return to their families, their tribe, or their native land. On American soil, these individuals were treated as property. These human beings were denied basic rights, including the right to their own name and heritage, any rights to education, even the right to maintain a family were denied to them. As Chief Justice Taney sadly made all too clear, in the infamous Dred Scott case, he said of African Americans, and I quote from his decision, African Americans were not included and were not intended to be included under the word citizens in the Constitution and could therefore claim none of the rights and privileges 
which that instrument provides for and secures to the citizens of the United States. On the contrary, they were at that time considered as a subordinate and an inferior class of beings who had been subjugated by the dominant race and whether emancipated or not, yet remained subject to their authority and had no rights or privileges but such as those who held the power and the government might choose to grant them. One of the saddest decisions ever made by the Supreme Court of the United States. While the Reconstruction Amendments, the 13th Amendment banning slavery, the 14th Amendment granting full citizenship to all Americans, and the 15th Amendment guaranteeing the right to vote espouse these principles of equality for all, Widespread oppression continued. Under slavery's harsh replacement, Jim Crow laws, African Americans were denied voting rights, denied employment opportunities, denied access to public accommodations, denied entry into military service, denied criminal justice protections, denied housing, denied education, denied police protection, denied due process. In short, denied their very humanity. Not until the passage of the Civil Rights Act in 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and other federal protections did legal, legal segregation officially cease in this country. The destructive effects of both slavery and Jim Crow remain, however. As President Bush noted, quote, the racial bigotry fed by slavery did not end with slavery or with segregation, end quote. President Clinton likewise stated that the racial divide is, quote, America's constant curse, end quote. Today, many African Americans remain mired in poverty. Average incomes remain below that of white Americans. There remains an achievement gap in education. And for many health conditions, African Americans bear a disproportionate burden of disease and injury and death and disability. African Americans are, moreover, disproportionately involved with the criminal justice system in our prisons. Recently, states, Alabama, Connecticut, Maryland, Florida, New Jersey, North Carolina, and Virginia enacted resolutions apologizing for the role their states played in sanctioning and promoting slavery and segregation. Corporations such as J.P. Morgan, Aetna, and Wachovia have all also acknowledged uh, and apologized for their role in and profit from slavery. Slavery, Jim Crow laws, and their lasting consequences, however, are an enduring national shame. It was the United States that enshrined slavery in the Constitution and protected it for nearly a century. It is Congress that passed the shameful laws, such as the Missouri Compromise of 1820 and the Fugitive Slave Law of 1850, which protected and furthered slavery. It was our nation's Supreme Court which bolstered slavery and legally sanctioned segregation, as I said in the Dred Scott case of 1859 and Plessy v. Ferguson, 1896, which said we could be separate but equal. It was the federal government which was officially segregated. By 1913, all federal departments were officially, officially segregated. It was the United States which kept African Americans who wanted nothing more than to serve their country segregated in the military. And it wasn't until 1948 when President Truman issued the executive order desegregating the military. Presidents as far back as John Adams have acknowledged the injustice of slavery. As I mentioned, in 1998, President Clinton spoke of the evils of slavery and expressed regret for America's role in the slave trade. In 2004, President Bush visited Gori Island, a holding place for captured slaves in Africa, and spoke of the wrongs and injustices of slavery, calling it, quote, one of the great crimes of history. Moreover, in 1988, Congress rightly apologized for the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II. In 1993, Congress justly apologized to Native Hawaiians for overthrowing their king. The Senate has correctly apologized for its failure to enact anti-lynching legislation. And last year, as part of the Indian Health Bill, the Senate passed an amendment apologizing, rightfully so, to Native Americans. 
Yet this Congress has never offered a formal apology for slavery and Jim Crow, and it's long past due. A national apology by the representative body of the people is a necessary collective response to a past collective injustice. So it is both appropriate and imperative that Congress fulfill its moral obligation and officially apologize for slavery and Jim Crow laws. As we acknowledge and apologize for this great injustice, we would be remiss, however, to fail to recognize those Americans who with great courage fought to ensure this country lived up to its founding ideals. Hundreds of thousands served their country and risked their lives so others could be free. And many gave, in the words of Abraham Lincoln, the last full measure of their devotion. From the beginning of the Republic to the present, individuals of all races and nationalities and genders and creeds and religions have risked much, including their lives, striving for a better and more just America. It is these often nameless individuals who registered the voters in the Mississippi Delta, who marched over the bridge in Selma, fought for better jobs and housing in northern cities, and desegregated the lunch counters. I point to people like Edna Griffin, John Bibbs, Leonard Hudson. In 1948, they entered the Katz drugstore in Des Moines, Iowa, on a hot summer day, and ordered some Cokes and ice cream at a segregated lunch counter. When the manager refused to serve them because the store did, quote, not serve colors, end quote, Miss Griffin refused to leave. And outraged Iowans responded with sit-ins and picketed the Katz drugstore and other residents refused to serve people because of their race. And they won. And the Griffin won. The lunch counters were desegregated. And who, who but a handful knows of Edna Griffin or John Bibbs or Leonard Hudson? It is only because of the extraordinary acts of bravery by ordinary Americans like these in all corners of this country that the mightiest walls of oppression have been torn down. As this nation formally apologizes and acknowledges slavery and Jim Crow, we must also recognize that this nation owes these individuals, most known only to their friends and their family, an enormous debt of gratitude. As we make this formal apology, moreover, we must acknowledge and celebrate the deep, lasting contributions that slaves, former slaves, and their descendants have made to this country in every field of human endeavor, law, literature, science, medicine, arts, business, education, sports, politics. Indeed, the list goes on and on. And six months ago, an African-American took the oath of office as President of the United States for the first time in our nation's history. In conclusion, I want to read from the resolution so all those in the gallery and the American people hear the long overdue words emanating from this body. Congress acknowledges the fundamental injustice, cruelty, brutality, and inhumanity of slavery and Jim Crow laws. Apologizes to African Americans on behalf of the people of the United States for the wrongs committed against them and their ancestors who suffered under slavery and Jim Crow laws, and expresses its recommitment to the principle that all people are created equal and endowed with inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and calls on all people of the United States to work toward eliminating racial prejudices, injustices, and discrimination from our society. In closing, I think it's important to note that this resolution will soon pass by unanimous consent, which means every senator supports it without objection. And finally, let us make no mistake, this resolution will not fix lingering injustices. While we are proud of this resolution, and believe it is long overdue, the real work lies ahead. Let us continue to work together to create better opportunities for all Americans. That is truly the best way to address the lasting legacy of slavery 
and Jim Crow. Madam President, I yield the floor.